morning to another uh, Q for Teams champions using Teams effectively. I'm Ricardo Wilkins, uh, Microsoft Teams geek. Um, so I'll be joining you today. And uh, if you're new, which I feel like I see some new names there, um, you know, this is a office hours, AMA, ask me anything, um, you know, and also just a place to for us all to share best practices, come with questions, anything like that. So your your mics are able to uh, be turned on. If you want to come on off mute and ask a question, you can also put it in a chat. I'm usually joined by Stacy. Stacy's busy these days, as you might imagine, and uh, so she won't be joining us today, I don't think. Um, I think we do or will have some other, a couple other Microsoft folks have been joining lately, so uh, we do, will have that support as well. So all that being said, uh, feel free to put in the chat or come off mute if you've got a question. Uh, it might be Ignite related, which just occurred this week. Um, tons of new announcements uh, there, but uh, but for sure, if you came with a particular question you were hoping to get answered, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, and while you're thinking about that, also think about I had a question for you all when last week we I kind of did a little soft poll about you know what you guys are interested in, um, and I know document management came up file collaboration maybe is a better way to put that and so um, I am interested what if, if that is a common theme what kind of challenges or pain points you've had with file collaboration file sharing document management using teams and SharePoint because um, if you do have a specific scenario uh, I, I'm I'm hoping I'm, I'm guessing I might have a you know a good solution there to to, to demo or, or talk through or that somebody else might be able to share something on. So that's kind of my question for the day is file collaboration. What's your pain points? So, but I'm happy to take any of your questions first or anything that's out there. So I'll be quiet for a sec. Anything from anybody? You might still be waking up, still getting your coffee, so that's cool. <laughs> well, this is Christy. Yeah. So there is some focus in my area on switching the telephone lines to um, Teams calling. So mm -hmm. a lot of the seminars that I was looking um looking at during ignite were related to were related to that mm -hmm. do you have any ideas anything that you can share regarding teams telephones uh so i'll, I'll go from two perspectives um from ignite and i haven't i haven't dived into all of the teams phone related stuff but i remember i know teams premium was mentioned which among other things, I think there's a lot in that, but uh, some customization, more more customization options were there. So I'm just kind of starting with that just as a anybody, if you are trying to dive deep into, you know, your, your team's meeting rooms and team's phone and whatnot, team's premium sounds like that might be worth uh, taking a look at to like fully brand everything you got going on with that. Uh, stepping back from that, y yes, you know, worked with, Lot, working with lots of customers who are, um, you know, going all in on on Teams as as phone. What I what I think we also call unified communications, right? Because the sweet spot is when that's all done, right? You, you're still you're at Teams is that one stop shop for all your stuff as, as it is today. But now your phone uh, is going through that as well. Uh, I know some are you know integrating desk phones as part of that. I mean, you can really have the best of both worlds depending on how you how you want to configure that. In my world, I like the fact. I mean, I don't use a desk phone, but my phone and voicemail and everything, it's all coming through Teams. Take calls through the headset, uh, make make calls, of course, and and things of that nature. So it is a nice uh, integration, uh, at least from my perspective, to have that all in one spot. Um, so um, I don't know if that's where you where you're going from in terms of just a uh, you know the, someone's experience with it or if you're 
trying to dive deep into the actual Im- implementation or anything like that, or, or you guys are just, just the implementation. About it. The implementation okay. will come. Um, yeah. yeah, they're they're going to dive all the way into that. But my understanding is sometime in December, we are going to have um, some representatives from Microsoft on site, and they're going to walk us through the implementation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there should be tons of support from your Microsoft team for getting that going um, or, or whatever partner you may be working with. I was trying to show, so what, what you're seeing on the screen now does, doesn't really fully represent what you would get when you kind of go all in because we're missing the uh, dial pad here as well. Um, but in a fully implemented, uh, you know, Teams phone system, I'd have a dial pad and able to make place calls here um even even knowing my location from a emergency call perspective uh, things like that what is though represented here is just i mean these in this case these calls are are you know one-to-one like chat calls but this is this you know would be similar to what i'd see if i was getting actual calls and also my voicemails would be here as well um being able to call folks and and, and external folks uh, would all be a part of this this interface it's again right from the left rail so um yeah and I'm, I'm just a big fan of everything in one place and so yeah if you're going with with, with phone system that that's going to be great ricardo yeah correct my understanding when teams rolled out um back when i was at finance in or about the top of 21, that's when we rolled out teams um, in Department of Finance in New York City. I recall the history call log showing the time and then how many, right, so uh, as well as the date, it provided a time and then how much time was spent on the call. And then as time went on, the time that the call was made fell off. Hmm. Is that coming back? <laughs> Did it ever exist? Did I imagine it? Uh, so, I mean, I, for one, I had to zoom my, re- uh, my zoom to, to get the, uh, so some more columns showed. So I did that while you were talking, but in this case, I am seeing the call, you know, time made w- once I click on it. Um, and again, this isn't really fully set up for phone system, but uh, are, are you saying it used to? I'm trying to I'm actually looking at my other environment here uh, to see. Yeah, even on my other environment, I'm not seeing the time made in, in, a, in a column in here, if column. that's what you're expecting. That's yeah. what I was expecting, yes. Okay. Yeah, if it was there, I'm not, because I'm looking at my actual live one on another screen. And I don't see it there either, so it's not like it's a GCC thing or anything. So maybe they did take that column away. That detail is there, though. Once I click on one, I can see, you know, when and when it was made and what time, but not as a column, it seems. But the but the duration certainly is there. Now, let me just do my uh, zoom a little bit and make sure it's not a zoom. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's a zoom thing. So, and are those columns configurable by us? Uh, I've never looked into that um, in terms of like uh, moving them around or, or adding new columns. Yes, like adding detail. Yeah. Let's check that really quick. Um, uh, so what your admin, I don't know if you're an admin, but what your admins will see once that whole thing, oh, resolution is really, I guess I tried to do that for you all's benefit, but it's really <laughs> big here. Where I was going was, uh, uh, this isn't the admin, because there is a phone uh, tab in the uh, admin portal, and we might be able to see very quickly if um, there is some configuration of that. And I'm in the right one. Where is my... Where's my admin portal? Oh, the grief. So many logins. Can I select this? Yeah, 
Go here and go here. Yes. And show all and we have our teams administrative. So if you're a pure end user, you may have never seen this interface. Uh, if you happen to be a tenant admin for an Office 365, then this may be familiar to you. Yes, I know, I know. Please skip the tour. Um, da, 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 da. And what I was looking for is, it might be here, just to see if there are any quick, um, yeah, this wouldn't be probably the place. So yeah, if there's if if there are options for changing that look, yeah, I would think they'd be here, but I'm not sure exactly where they would be. I've I've not I've not seen or heard of people changing those I'm around. It's order history. You saw order history? No, let me go back. Order history. Oh, that well um, to the right of numbers to the right yeah, of where that, you are now. That I think is like uh, I think that may be something else. That's like purchasing orders, I think. Okay. Yeah. Buying numbers, I think. So yeah, I'm not aware of anything for that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So because uh, it it wouldn't be uh. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, nothing's popping out to me. Team template. Uh, yeah, nothing's really popping out to me as where that might be. So, but yeah, that, that would be interesting um, if these columns could be changed. But at least the info is there. <laughs> uh, if not, its own column. So, so yeah, this will be a this will be a place you'll live. Uh, you know, once the, once the phone's all implemented there. Any uh, uh, thumbs up for other people that are using phone in, in Teams? I have a question, Ricardo. Yeah. Um, we have sometime uh, team meetings. Uh, I was wondering if we can get a copy, uh, the transcript and minutes of the meeting while we're talking. Yep, uh, you mean the meetings, You not this meeting, you're, you're talking not about the meetings. today, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, meetings in general. Um, or, or I'm sorry, were you were you asking for a transcript of this meeting, or you're saying in general when you have meetings, you're looking in, for transcripts? In general, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, there. Let me see if I got an example here, because uh, there is recording with transcription these days. I'm trying to see if one of mine has it in there as attendance. Let's just fire up one. Uh, so we start the meeting. Join it. And then uh, we would we have start recording and start transcription. It's not going to. And so we see here set the spoken language for the transcript. We can confirm that I'm not going to because this demo environment doesn't have any microphones. I'm not going to get anything. What would happen, though, is as I'm talking, this this window would show the uh, text as I'm talking. If other people were talking, and it would know who it is and put their little bubble next to their, you know, next to what they say. And then the end result. Uh, let's see if I stop transcription. I don't know if it'll make a file since there was nothing there. But the end result would be a uh, transcription file. Let me in this meeting. See if uh, if it did anything for us. Transcript is available. Okay, so there we go. It's probably going to be blank, but that would this would yeah you know, this would essentially be the transcript of what happened in a meeting, and this would be a file that uh, that you would have, similar to uh, what we would get back when we put when meetings were recorded in stream, and they had transcripts as well. Um, so I'm thinking that's what you're what you were going for there. Yes. Yeah. So you'll see even after the meeting, it get, gets a dedicated tab here. Um, and uh, download as, e as either a doc or whatever. V oh, I think BTD T BTT is those folks that do a lot with transcription. I think that's a some kind of industry uh, 
file file name there. Um, so the short answer is yes. You, you can yes. have transcription of your meetings. Yet. Thank you. And I guess the last thing I'd say, I, you know, we saw two options there for uh, start recording, start transcription. I've also seen transcription start along with the recording. Um, so that uh, maybe that, that may be a setting um, for automatically transcribing with recording, but if nothing else, at least the, uh, the unique um, options are there, if not together. stuff um I, someone jokingly told me that that's also a way to uh for forever document when someone's off mute and, and uh <laughs> says you know says stuff they weren't uh you know didn't think they were being heard and you know or you know transcription lets you know who was the culprit of that background noise because even if it's if it's any noise that's intelligible enough for it to you know put in a transcript your name goes right next to it so it's a nice little naughty list of uh, people who forgot to go on mute. <laughs> so, good stuff. Any other questions out there? Um. While we're while I, while you're thinking, one thing I did want to show, and I don't know if Ignite talked about it, but it's on the roadmap. Um, where's my other window? Uh, let's see. Here, there we go. Uh, this is my co commercial tenant, and um, there we go. If you are on a tenant that's doing public preview stuff, as this one is, you'll see this is coming soon. So it is on the roadmap. I think uh, it may be December by the time this fully rolls out, but it is in preview right now. This is a big one uh, that I have personally been waiting on. I'm a big fan of schedule or delayed delivery in Outlook and now in Teams. Um, and so, as you can see, you know, start up your message and then uh, right click it and you can decide when to send it. Before that native elegant solution came along, there was, um, or maybe is, I see, I'm, let me go to my commercial GCC tenant, see if it's here. Uh, workflow, no. Oops, that's not where I want to go. Uh, let's just go back here. So workflows, and then when we add those, one of them was, I think, uh, delay, or there was some setup needed here, but uh, it's, it's schedule a message. So essentially, this is you doing it with, with uh, Power Automate. It was a way before that can, came along or before that comes along. It is a, a way to get this done. Basically, you just uh, use the Power Automate. What, and that was sort of cool, but what the downside is, is really just the text of the message. Um, so you could delay delivery of a basic text uh, message, but this more elegant native tool is allows me I could do text in my images and whatever I needed to do in that message and still delay the delivery of that. So that is uh, pretty cool. Um, but in either case, from best practice perspective, I highly encourage de delay delivery, whether in Teams or Outlook, uh, to you know send messages at, at times that are uh, that work best for the person you're sending them to uh, that work within their working hours. Um, lets you be a little more guilt free if you're working after hours and want to send messages, you can delay them till the, the next morning, things like that. So could be other use cases for that, but that's usually my main use case is just trying to uh, <clears throat> get it uh, done during, you know, it's sensitive to people's working hours. And then the last thing I'd say there, um, so it's it looks like uh, wait am I on the right one? So it's it, it may not look like it may not be a part of your 
chatting with yourself, because certainly in Outlook, I will delay delivery of messages to myself as a, a reminder to me at a certain time to do something and, and knowing that I'm going to be looking at my inbox at that time. I've used that as well. So um, I guess I don't get that option for Teams delay. So, so just a little preview there of something coming soon to both GCC and uh, and uh, commercial. If you're all, if you're also a delayed delivery fan, give me a thumbs up so I can see that as well. If you haven't ever done delayed delivery, even in Outlook, and you want to see that, let me know. But uh, um, yeah, so we got one thumbs up out there. It, I'll, last thing I'll say to that in old school Outlook desktop, it was uh, a multi-click process is basically, uh, I forget how it's worded, but it's several clicks to delay that delivery. But in a um, in an Outlook web world, it's much, much easier. If I'm doing a message, um, it's literally just part of the drop down schedule send and I can send it whenever, whenever I want much more convenient than desktop in my opinion. So good stuff. I'll say one last thing about that. What that also, um, includes then kind of bringing that all home is if I am doing share to outlook for a teams mess teams posts like this whether sending to myself which, which is what i do often or to someone else because that's using outlook web that also gets to benefit from a schedule send so if you are trying to share some teams thing uh, with someone and you want to do it in a appropriate time you got that option there as well so just another little tips and tricks there I'm not missing anything. Okay, so yes, we use Outlook delayed delivery. Oh, please show us in Teams. Okay, so I think I did Outlook delayed delivery. Yes, so I showed you that in Teams. Um, okay, yep, you love it. Yep, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think I missed a few of the chat messages. Okay, awesome, awesome. Anything else going on? Uh, and just, uh, you know, Kimberly, I see your cool looking thumbs up in the chat <laughs> and now I'm curious how you did that. You got a nice emoji. Is that just a standard, uh, emoji? I did there? a search on thumbs up. The search feature is awesome for emojis. So, okay. <laughs> I didn't even know it was there. It's very cute. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh. So you did a search and then thumbs. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we're all used to the standard one there. Kim found the, what I think is a cute one there. Nice. <laughs> all right. I, I, you know, I once I saw it was like squirrel. Once I saw it, I was like, I just couldn't take my eyes off. Like, how's she do I that? I know it's silly, <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah. Awesome. Emojis are cool. There he is. Cool beans. From a, uh, you know, uh, a little side note on this here. Um, you know, we, we did launch a while back the uh, skin tones for things like the uh, thumbs up um, and some other things. But I, was, I remember being in a meeting where somebody called out that, uh, you know, the emojis are still yellow and even um, <laughs> the uh, reactions uh, in the team's meeting. So yellow still still a, a pre predominant uh, color. I don't know if we'll ever get emojis with skin tone. That, that might be interesting. <laughs> of course, angry will continue to be red. I think that's universal, but <laughs> be interesting to see skin tones on the classic emoji there. But I was trying to, if you uh, haven't seen that before, anything with the uh, little dot on it, 
right click it, you get a selection of skin tones that you can use. So, that's a little tidbit there. Good stuff. Anything else out there? All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, last thing, I'll, so again, I, I, whether it's in chat or maybe come back next week and let me know, but again, if you've got any file collaboration pain points for us to talk about or demo, I'd love to hear that. And then also I had planned on at some point talking a little bit about mobile and, and actually showing my mobile app on the screen and you know maybe sh talking through that. If you're a mobile user or if you're not a mobile user and would be interested in that, you know, let me know as well. Um, we don't we don't often talk about that or certainly don't demo it much because I, I got to do a separate setup. I, I can show my mobile screen on there, but I got just got to do a separate setup for that. But if that's an interest or you got some uh, use case or pain point related to mobile, that'd be uh, interesting to talk about, too, um, as well. Um, and I'm just reading the chat and uh, in Outlook, the delay delivery message sits in the sender's outbox. If the sender's computer is off, um, it won't be delivered. So, and is the Teams delay delivery? Yeah. So that delay delivery for Teams, that should be, uh, that's not dependent on your local machine. And in fact, even the uh, delay delivery for Outlook Web, I believe would be the same. I don't think I've ever had an issue um, with that, scheduling that. Because um, in fact, I don't think it, I don't think it sits in, let's just try it. Because I don't think it sits in a traditional um, outbox in this case. But you're right for Outlook Desktop, I believe that would be the case. Uh, schedule a send and send it there. It sits in the sent items folder and I can confirm right. that I do this all the time where I send it to my boss at like 630 in the morning. If my computer is off, I'm asleep and it still. Right. Sends. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was expecting to see it here with the uh, maybe I did something wrong here, but I think it, it sits here and it has a little thing that it says like scheduled delivery or something tagged on it. But yeah, whether but Outlook Web and Teams would be all cloud based, uh, not dependent on your machine being on. But I believe desktop outlook, that traditional delay delivery thing, I think is a client needs the client. So if you haven't uh, tried Outlook Web, look, for me, I'm 93 and a half percent always Outlook Web. Um, just because of some of the cool features. Now they are making their way to desktop if you've been keeping up with that. Um, but uh, for, for now, I love the Outlook web and I go to the desktop for the small few things that it still does um, that I every now and then need. So if you haven't tried it, you know, or maybe even try it side by side with your desktop, but it is some cool features. I think I may have done some some uh, videos on it, but if nothing else, two killer ones that uh, until they come to desktop, I'm, I'm here all day long is um, pinning and snoozing. So uh, just real quick, snoozing, uh, as you can see, it's going to take it out of my inbox and resend it to me at the time that I specify as if it was brand new. And that's basically, I, yes, this is important, but I don't want to deal with it now, but I don't want to forget it. That's, that's how I use it. And I do a lot of stuff where I send it to the weekend. Hey, this is not relevant to work, but I do want to see it. And I start queuing up a bunch of stuff that hits me at Saturday at 10 a.m., like 10, 10 emails all at once. Pinning keeps the uh, your important emails at the top of the list. Um, and it's it's folder dependent. So if I pin something that is one of the subfolders, it'll pin to that folder as well. So those two features alone uh, have kept me in Outlook Web for for a while. And uh, so those could be some game changers to your workflow. Just something to consider. There are other things about Outlook Web I like too, but those are two big ones like, that I can no longer live live in this world without. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content.